Hello, beautiful internet family. Dan here from DanceTube.tv. And today I'm very, very excited to finally check out the following modes for the Mini 2. So we finally have tracking and following modes for DJI's Mini 2. Probably one of the best budget 4K mini drones on the market right now. And the thing that's so exciting about this is it's really in its infancy. So you guys get to really see um, how it operates in its beta, because this is actually the Android beta of Lychee, um, which allows you to use following and tracking modes on the uh, Air 2S, the Mini 2, and also the Mini SE as well. I will be showcasing the waypoints mode as well for the Mini 2, and I'll also have a separate video for the Mini SE where I showcase the tracking modes as well as the actual waypoints as well. So there'll be a few videos on the channel, but this video right here is focusing purely on the following mode. Uh, you can actually use a tracking mode, which is more of like a, um, I guess a software based tracking mode where it's similar to the active track on DJI's drones where you draw a box and then the drone just kind of tracks that box or that object or that vehicle or whatever it may be. But the thing that I actually really, really love about Lychee is they have a following mode, which is something that I believe we used to have on DJI drones. And then for whatever reason, they've just pushed it towards active track, which is more of a software based tracking mode. The thing that makes the following modes so special on Lychee is that it's actually tracking the signal from the controller. So that means that even if you're completely invisible to the drone, it's still going to track that signal from the controller. So fantastic. Honestly, it makes the world of difference because even in this example here, you can see I go behind trees and if it was active track, it would probably stop following you at that point or it would struggle to figure out where you've gone to. But that's why following modes are so much more powerful in my opinion. And it's more of a hardware based tracking over you know, focusing purely on an algorithm and the software focus from drawing a box on someone. So out of all of the tests I've done so far with the following modes, uh, it does a fantastic job. It literally never stopped following me. And that's because it's not trying to find someone in the environment. You know, it's not using an algorithm. It's literally just following the signal from the controller, which really allows you to have some special opportunities uh, to get some really unique shots uh, even if you're not visible to the drone itself. So that's where I was really impressed. It never stopped following me, it never had issues. And considering this is a beta, I was really impressed with the stability of the tracking mode, of the following mode, um, had no issues with it. I know that when I've tested Lychee in the past, I had a few little issues here and there, and that was in its early stages of testing the beta. Um, but yeah, this is flawless. I literally had no issues, it never, struggled to track me, anything I actually put into uh, the settings here, whether that was like the altitude, the distance, or the way that the drone was actually following me, all of that worked really well. And the drone was uh, smooth, you know, it was responsive, but it was smooth. And that's what really impressed me, actually. It did a great job of the smooth movements, which was actually something I had an issue with um, previously when I tested Lychee. I noticed that it was maybe not as smooth or it had a little bit of like awkward movements. Um, I actually found that it was so much more smoother than my previous experiences and it worked flawlessly. Another side mention here is something that I actually really like again about the Lychee app. And what that is, is it allows you to actually record the audio like from the microphone in your phone. So you can have some commentary on the ground while your drone is flying in the distance. And that's something that DJI used to have and then all of a sudden it just wasn't a thing anymore and for whatever reason they've just cut that completely out. So that's something that you can actually get from the Lychee application and uh, I guess we'll show you some audio here of me like maybe beatboxing or talking to myself or <laughs> something like that or even just some ambience of like the wind or whatever just to show you that like it's actually possible to record the audio on the ground while your drone is flying. This is something a lot of people ask me about in the comments on my YouTube videos. Um, so this is an easy way to do it through the Lychee application and it also adds a bunch of other features as well including obviously right now the following mode that you're seeing which is just not a thing for many two users if you're using DJI Fly. The Lychee literally opens up a whole new world for many two users. Like I said I'm really impressed with the reliability of the flight. I think it did a fantastic job and very responsive to all of my inputs. 
I love the dynamic shots that you can capture as you're adjusting the different parameters in the settings. So I can just have it set up to follow me and it will just automatically follow me at the altitude and distance I've set it at. But then if I want to adjust those uh, parameters or those metrics, the drone will you know, intuitively go back to that point or it will go up to that height, but it does it in a way where it actually looks really smooth. It doesn't look as jarring as it used to. And it actually can create some form of a dynamic shot, like a revealing shot or you know, something very unique that you wouldn't be able to get from just the DJI Fly app. And that was something I really liked, you know, especially if you're moving and then you adjust those metrics. Um, it does a great job of, of really creating that dynamic look and something that's actually usable, you know, which is really cool to see something unique. And it creates like a whole new creative perspective uh, for Mini 2 users who weren't able to do stuff like this previously. The other thing I'm really obsessed with from the following mode through Lychee is the option to change the heading. So that means that the drone will be tracking you from you know, a different heading based on what you tap on. And it's as simple as literally going into those settings tapping on a different heading and the drone will fly to that location. It will fly off to the right of you, behind you, you know, on a diagonal or in front of you, however you want it to track. Now that's something that DJI have only just released for their Mavic 3. And that's one of their big calling cards. It's like a directional tracking, but literally with our Mini 2, we can replicate the exact same thing basically here um, through Lightchain, which is really, really cool. You know, you can get some super unique perspectives in front of you, behind you on an angle, and you can get those dynamic movements as you change the location. So if you want to track from the front and then go off to the rear side, let's say like the rear right side, you can tap on that and the drone will continue to follow you, but it will readjust to that point that you want it to track you from. Uh, again, creating a unique perspective. It works fluidly. I had no issues with any of the functionality. Actually, I was super impressed how stable and reliable this beta has been for me so far. Um, and I love to, you know, having those options, like especially on a Mini 2, which is such a capable drone, but it's just lacking, obviously, the tracking modes, the follow modes, um, and it's lacking the waypoints as well. But with Lychee, we get all of those in quite an affordable package. So yeah, honestly, there's nothing I can say that's been negative about my experience. I never had any issues with it. It was very like reliable, it was on point every single time. The application is solid. It gives you so many options, but it's also familiar as well. So if you've used DJI Fly or DJI Go 4, or even you know other drone apps out there, it's familiar enough that you're not too overwhelmed, but there's also a bunch of options that you, know, you really need to take the time to learn. Um, and I find that's what's so amazing about this application. You know, it's got so much information, so many options, so many features but they're relatively easy to find at a glance. You know, you really need to take the time to figure it all out. But I launched my drone and most of these features were really intuitive to find. You know, like I figured out, okay, I tap on follow and then I just press play and then it automatically starts following me. And then if I press that little like cog icon, that's where all my settings are, as simple as that. And I can scroll down and it's all detailed and it tells me exactly what each setting is. And you know, just tapping on it, you get an immediate response from the drone, so you know what that means, which is, again, really reassuring to know that the drone is interfacing so nicely with the application. Even looking at like the altitude and the distance and the speed and, and all of those metrics in the bottom left corner, as well as like the bottom right corner where it shows you uh, the drone and how it's actually responding in the world. Um, I know that previous times I've tested the beta, uh, these, I guess, metrics and visual aids were fine, you know, they worked well, but they were a little bit fiddly and they weren't 100% accurate all the time. I did find I had a few issues early on when I was testing Lychee's beta, um, back when I was actually testing on the Mavic Mini, but obviously they've done a lot of progression since then and the application is solid, all the metrics are great. And you know, as you adjust that distance, it's like on the money every single time. It flies in nice and smoothly, it slows down at a gradual rate, it's not jumpy or jarring, and, and I've clearly seen the improvement. You know, they've obviously put a lot of energy into making it the most cinematic and smooth experience. And that, for me, is reassuring because, again, this is a beta. When this becomes a public release and we get a few more iterations, a few more bug fixes, this is going to be a very reliable application. Um, I know a lot of people out there who would be nervous to use something like this, a third party application. Um, but just to see it working so flawlessly in this beta state, uh, I'm very confident that 
you know, I would be okay to recommend the public version to anyone that's got a Mini 2. I think maybe if you're a little bit nervous about it still, just wait until a few updates have come out. And then obviously look in the forums, look on the Facebook groups, and just see how people are, you know, talking about the Lightchew public release. See how they're finding the following modes and the waypoints. Uh, because you know this is an expensive drone and you're trusting the life of the drone, I guess, on this third party application. Uh, so I think it's really important to make sure that you're confident and know that it's actually a reliable release or a reliable version that we're up to. Um, but yeah, like I keep saying, in its current state in beta, it is flawless. And I'm very impressed by that. They've done a fantastic job here. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's a point here near the end actually where I'm sitting on the bench and you know I can adjust the, the distance from me which actually creates like a unique revealing shot because it's focusing in on the controller so it's kind of moving the camera up as it's moving away from me again a very unique perspective a unique shot that you couldn't capture or you could but it would be quite challenging to capture this um, flawlessly you know so I, th I think this is actually a very creative way uh, to play around with your mini 2 and it really opens up a bunch of options that you know you just don't have available to you through the Fly app. So well worth checking out. I know that the iOS version will be coming out late March, but the Android beta is out right now. And then the Android public release will be coming out in the coming weeks. Um, from my understanding, like she said, the public version would be coming out within a week. Uh, but by the time this video actually goes live, the public version will, will actually probably be available. So just check in the comments and I'll let you guys know uh, when that's available. But I'm very excited about this. I Like I said, I've got the waypoints mode that you can see from the Mini 2. That will be a separate video. Plus I've also tested uh, waypoints and the following mode for the Mini SE, which is the more budget friendly drone out there. Um, so keep tuned to the channel. I'll have some more Lightchi content very soon. Uh, I definitely will document all the iOS releases as well of how that goes for Lightchi and the different drones. Um, but yeah, this is an exciting one and we've been waiting for this for months and months and months. So thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure to let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Let me know if you're going to pick up Lightchi. And if you're already using the beta or you're using the public version by now, let me know your experiences in the comments. I'm very keen to hear how everyone's going with this following mode. Anyway, chat to you in the next one. Peace.